What's up, Scrollgers? It's Nerp here, and today we are going to do some judgment with a twist. Uh, first of all, new week. You may have noticed in Scrolls that the weekly winners are the same as last week, which is actually a bug of some sorts. For some reason, this week the weekly winners they didn't update on the splash page or in chat badges, so I still talk as the number two player. Um, but the chat said um, in the announcement that I got the number one badge for this week, so I should have the number one badge this week. But uh, yeah, and Hatharo actually w is supposed to have two badges this week. He actually won the third place and the most wins of the week, which is, I believe, the first time somebody um, won one of these top three badges and the most wins in a week badge in the same week. So definitely congrats to him. But like I said, we're going to do judgment. We're going to spice it up today. Um, I know I've spiced up Judgment before, uh, where I just like take only sc uh, scrolls from one column, so just completely luck dependent, or uh, stuff like that. But what I am going to do today is do the Purple Pansies Don't Judge Me A to Z Judgment Challenge. So uh, he came up with this idea. He actually did a playthrough of this um, judgment restriction on his YouTube channel. The Purple Pansy is a popular Scrolls streamer. He used to almost always stream the ESLs, and I think he might start doing that again. But he's had less free time lately. But he's been uploading some YouTube videos here and there, so if you want to check him out, there'll be a link to his A to Z judgment video and his channel in the description. This is his idea, and he was kind enough to let me share it all with you guys. So what it, what it is basically, I'll explain the rules. So I like his idea because it's not completely luck dependent um, because there is some parts where you get to like have some choice. So basically is you go by the alphabet and the 26 letters of the alphabet in order and um, you have to pick a scroll on the row if it starts with the letter uh, in the alphabet that you're on. So I start with A, so as soon as I see a scroll that starts with the letter A, I have to pick it. And once I pick that scroll, then I go into B, and then I have to pick a B. And um, it also counts for like the second word in the name, like feedback jolt. This can count as an F word, an F scroll, or a J scroll. Um, but if there's like, if this row had like feedback jolt and, and, uh, or that's a, that's a bad example. But if it, um, if there's like two things that start with the same letter, um, then I have a choice. And if like one thing has the correct letter in the first word and one in the second word, I take the one that has the right letter in the first word of the scroll's name. And if the, a row does not have whatever scroll that uh, corresponds with what letter I'm on, then I can pick whatever I want. So I'm basically hoping that I don't get what letter is next. And then I get the most freedom. Um, so when the Pearl Pansy did this, he got down to letter N, I believe. Past letter N. So that's about half the alphabet through 45 picks, which is, I think, pretty good. Um, I guess scrolls, scrolls names use the whole alphabet. So let's just start. Um, if you didn't understand the rules, I'm sure you'll begin to understand them as I go about. So this row does not have an A. Neither do any of these. Nothing starts with A in either of the scrolls names. So I'm just going to be able to pick whatever I want. And seeing what's down here, I'm going to be able to take some decent energy stuff because there's an Ironclad Reaver and Scattergun or two decent scrolls. Wings Charger is here, but this row is not that good, and this row doesn't really have anything nice in order. So I'll start with the Scattergunner, and this row, still no A, I'm able to continue. Yeah, Ragged Wolf, Two Clemens, Trinity, Corpus Collector, Morbid Curiosity, Kabonk, Sister the Fox, Advantageous Outlook, there's my A. So I have to take Advantageous Outlook. As much as I'd rather take a Dust Runner because it saves energy, I have to take the Advantageous Outlook. 
here I will take, I don't know, supercharged, desert memorial, I don't know, if I have to take the appetite out of luck, maybe I want to go order, go into energy a little bit, I don't know, I'll take the supercharged. And now, is there a B in this row? No B. Here, um, there's no energy stuff on this row. Uh, there is charge coil and a rectus partisan here. Um, so I guess charge coil is good for this. And uh, I could go Duke Lumetrimin and then take the rectus partisan though. I'll take the Duke Lumetrimin here. Now, blast. There's a B. So I'm going to have to take the Inferno Blast there. Or Snargle Brain. Actually, I actually have a choice between Snargle Brain or Inferno Blast. But up here first, I have to take the Advantage Alex. So we get done with the first letter, knock it out on the fourth pick, or the fifth pick. And now we're on B, and we don't have any B on this row, so I can take whatever I want. And I would like to take the Charge Coil. And now we are on B. So... B, we can either take the Infernal Blast or the Snorgle Brain. Um, I think the Infernal Blast, they're both energy scrolls, which is good. I'm doing pretty well in energy right now. Uh, yeah, Infernal Blast, I think it's just more reliable, so I'll take that. And then I, next I have C, which I have on this row. There is a Crossman and a Crone. So I have a choice between those two scrolls as well. And then next would be D. So thank God Crossman or Crone is here, so I don't have to take a catapult of goo. Uh, and then D. Is there any D here? No D. Um, is there any D here? No D there. So I'm going to have some free picks after this row. So do I want Crone or Crossman? I don't have any growth, but I do have order. So I'll just take Crossman. Crossman's probably better than Crone anyways. So I'll take that. And now here, any D? No D. All right. Uh, I really don't want to mess up and like not pick something when I had to pick it. So please correct me in the comments if I did something wrong. I'm sure somebody's gonna be there to point it out. Uh, so now I'm gonna have a free choice because there are no Ds. So I could go with some decay. So I think transposition is just the best choice, though. So I'm gonna just take that. It's versatile. Um, here, there's a D. Dougal Spearman. So I'm gonna have to take that as much as I want to take a snorkel. Um, but lucky for me here, I'm gonna be able to take whatever I want because I don't have the D yet, and I don't have the D yet. All right, well, never mind. <laughs> um, Scout Automaton or Tempest Reaver. I don't have any other Automatons yet, so I think I'll just take the uh, Tempest Reaver. A nice solid four drop. Gaps the Scatter Gunner and the Ironclad Reaver. So I'll take that, and still no D on the... Oh, Reller Ross, wow. Still no D on this row. Yep. So I can take whatever I want. Uh, knowing I have to take the Ducal Spearman here, and then E is next, and there is no E on this. Oh, there is Vigor Extraction. So I, unfortunately, I can't take another Charge Coil. I will have to take this Vigor Extraction. Um, I think we're still totally in Energy the most. Uh, we're not in Growth or Decay. I don't know. I think I'm just going to take the Meyer Channel Bar. I guess it's easy to splash. So I'll just grab that. Now I have to take the Ducal Spearman, and now I have to take the Vigor Extraction, and now I'm an F, 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 do I have an F here? Vengeful Vetter, Ducal Infantryman, Samata Shift, and Gravelock Art, so no F. Um, ah, oh, there's an F here, I wish there wasn't, because then I could take the Burn, which is amazing for my energy deck. Um, so I'm gonna have to take the few words there, but I can take whatever I want here. Um, I'm th not sure. Am I in energy more or order more? I think I'm in energy slightly. Slightly more than order. 
Although I think you're actually much could help me go into decay, but I think I do like my energy stuff a tiny bit more, so I'll take the Gravelock Guard instead of the Ducal Infantryman. Alright. So there we go with that. And now right, A B C D E F. I have to take the Fjords, which I didn't really want. I'd rather take the burn, but oh well. And now we're on G. Which shouldn't take too long at sending those grave locks up. Oh, there's a grave lock freak down here. Do we have anything else before that? G G G G G G. All right, so it looks like we're gonna have a free pick here. A free pick here. But then I'm gonna have to take the grave lock guard here, which is not bad. Grave lock guard is pretty darn good, especially in an energy deck. And I do have another grave lock. Um, so I think I'm going to easily take the Blessing of Haste here. I am in order a bit, and it's just great. Now, an Inferno Blast or a Wing Spear? I think I want to be in Energy more, so I'm going to take the Inferno Blast. And now I have to take the Freak, uh, uh, the Gravelock Freak, G. So now, H, right? So... H, H, I'm not sure what scrolls start with H. Metal Heart, right here. So that's going to be knocked out right away, but I get a free pick here, and considering I am doing pretty well in energy, I'm going to take the Feedback Jolt. And just, I'm going to have to take the Metal Heart as much as I'd rather have a Bombard. Now we're on I, and... There is a tool initiate which has an has I an initiate, um, and I'm gonna have to take that, which is fine. I mean, maybe I'd rather have the dust runner, but this is perfectly fine. So now we're on J. Um, I already had to take some J scrolls like feedback Jolt and Fjords. No, that's F J. Okay, here J J J. Jolt. Oh, there's feedback jolt right there. Um, so I'm going to have to take that, which isn't bad anyways. But this row, I'm going to have a pick whatever I want. And I guess I'll take the Gallant Defender, but it looks like I still might might be in order. Um, hex marks might be better, though, because then I can go with the Myra Shambler and Hex Marks. But chances are I'm not going to have a mono deck. So I'd rather just take the safe pick, with the, which is the Gallant Defender. And now I... Ooh, actually... Never mind. I was going to say I could actually take the Grounds of the Fallen, but no. Uh, this is J, not F. So we take the Feedback Jolt for J. Alright. Now we're on K, which probably won't take too long considering there's the Kinfolks and there's Kabonk. So is there anything here? Knight. Right there, Knight. So I have to take the Aging Knight here, um, which is fine. L, L, uh, L, alright, if I'm correct, there's no L's in these next 12 scrolls, there's nothing that starts with L, alright, Okay, so I have anything I want here. So definitely hired Smuggler here, considering I'm energy. And now here, I'm not sure, considering I'm not in growth at all. I think I'm just going to take the Revenant. Um, might come in handy. So now the hired Smuggler. And... Uh, cooling the Flock, Earthen Mirth. I don't know. Whatever, Earthen Mirth. Who knows? It could it could help. Still no L. I'm getting a lot of free picks here. This is pretty nice. I'll take the Ducal Skirmisher. Vitality well uh Do I take Kabonk? Sure. Still no L's. I just want to see what scrolls start with L. 
Is it like likely that we're gonna find another L? L. Um, how do we see what it starts with? I don't know. Um, yeah, I don't know how to make it start with that. Well, whatever. Okay. I guess I'll take another blessing of haste. I guess there's Lockling Brood. That's our Tavel. Um. Charge Coil. A lot of things are with I. That looks kind of like an L, but not quite. Wetland Ranger, Transposition, Pest Simulator, Effigy the Queen. I guess let's just take the Transposition. Still not getting that L. Uh, I'm just making sure I don't pass up on an L here. So I guess Incendiary stay on color. Still no L's, wow. I don't know here, I guess I could take the Ripper, sure. Blade Husk, Wing Soldier, Revenant, Dust Runner is good. I'll take the Scatter Gunner. Another Scatter Gunner. Wow, we're just not getting an L here. Um, I guess Echo Maton. Right? Now we have Replicaton or Skull Shrine. I should probably take the Replicaton. Right? Yeah. Alright, and now we have Wicked Being, Speed, Siege Cracker, and Pillar of Z. So I'll take the Siege Cracker. And now. Dark Strike is interesting. Um, I could actually play Dark Strike and get the K, which I have Ripper, Revenant. I have some Decay stuff, but I think we're going to have enough energy and order stuff to make a deck. So I don't think I need that. I think I'm just going to take the Gravelock Raider. And now the Snargle Hunter. Oh, Forge is amazing. Ekamantan is good too. Uh, and that's it. I guess I never got an L. Hmm. I guess I'll take, I don't know. Sure, Storm Knight. Forge over Akamaton. And... Copper Automaton. So, guys, if I missed an L, I am really sorry. Man, if I didn't have the restriction, this would be a stellar Energy Judgment deck. It already is pretty darn good. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. Um, let's put in both blessings of haste. All the all these like fun scrolls over here. And I don't think we're gonna need actually metal heart. Now we're gonna get, we're gonna get rid of the metal heart. And I think that's a pretty darn good deck. We're gonna keep this. So let's call it uh A to Z challenge. And I did not get quite as far in the alphabet as the purple fancy did. Um, I got to L, he got to N. I really want to know what scrolls start with L besides Lockling Brood. Is there any like thing in chat that I can like do that with? Oh, oh wait, this is. It's in, That's an alphabetical order, isn't it? Right? Name. Yeah, okay, so let's go to L. Uh, we're too far. 
too far. Okay. So, languid, long warrior, leeching ring, life stealer, lockling brood, loyal darkling. It would have been easy to find a loyal darkling. And those are only when it's in the first part. Oh, there's also like clock library and stuff like that in the second part. All right, well, we didn't find any of those, so we're just gonna queue up for judgment right now, and here comes the postcom. And the judgment run begins. So first we have to face Na Na Alaka, which I think I've played a lot in Judgment before. Uh, I'm Mulligan, and this starting hand is pretty much perfect. I have one drop, two drop, into three drop, into four drop, and I'm placing a haste along the way if I need it. Um, so I have the middle of the board locked down before Na Na Alaka can uh, get some strong units on the board. He does have a nice spiky guy and a winged soldier, but I'm going to move down and pressure him considering I have a ranged unit ready to take down that spiky guy. And uh, I, I like my board presence right now. Um, he just stays back there and he doesn't move up. So I see that little wall in front. So I just decide, you know what? Let's just leave him alone and just hit that middle idol and control the board. So And I also play Forge up there. So that's just going to slowly give me more guys. And then he uses a transposition to actually take out my hard smoker, which does suck. But I mean, he is going to lose his wing spear. Um, I do take some spiky damage. Um, but at least that guy's attack was increased because of the transposition was a spell, so the Ekamaton's attack increased by two. And uh, I pressure him more with um, two four attack creatures attacking. Um, and his Magnetizer is only gonna be able to stop the one count, the one attack creature. I don't really have any attack buffs in this deck, so really the Raider isn't really that good. He's really just there to take damage so the Gravelock Freak can attack more. Um, and there I take out some things, but he's a Ducal, Ducal Skirmisher out, which could definitely come uh, to bite me um, and he gets an eternal sword on the one count on magnetized so that kind of sucks I do take it out though um, but it will jump on the relentless skirmisher that's like just as bad but now he's like alone and lucky for me I use a feedback drill to get rid of the enchanted skirmisher because he wasn't touching the other thing and then that's when Nanalaka just surrendered uh, because I had clear board control and I was just able to take out his skirmisher and his eternal sword in one, one nice swoop and now this match, um, another nice start. I'm able to play a couple one drops in a row, and then I actually sacrifice the temps root because I want to go double charge coil. Double charge coil in judgment is just so fun. Your opponent just can't really do anything. You just have to, you just have to hope they didn't they didn't draft like an incendiaries. So these are slowly pinging away um, my opponent's things. He hasn't erodes. I'm a little bit worried. Uh, Inferno Blast combined with Charge Coil is actually amazing. I love that. Um, he actually gets a Mangy Wolf to kill that one of those Charge Coils, so that's a little annoying. But, uh, I mean, the other Charge Coil is doing just fine. And he just surrenders right then and there. He didn't like where it was going. He see, he got pretty salty in chat. Uh, my profanity filter was turned off. And now into match 3. So I'm already 2-0 with my Don't Judge Me A to Z challenge deck. So I'm pretty pleased with that. It's a pretty darn good deck for a restricted deck where I just pick by the alphabet. Um, if it wasn't restricted, man, this deck would be crazy good. But I pl I, got, I got greedy and played a supercharger on that. I don't know why. I mean, supercharger isn't really going to do anything. So he just got Rangers Bait, and now I'm losing two scrolls from that. So that wasn't a great play by me. But I am able to get the charge code before he gets anything out, which is always a good thing because whatever he puts down will likely be hurt. Um, and I have to get the Ekamaton out. So I have a nice little control of the board, it looks like. And, uh, now, um, he's going to, like, decay and growth. I'm not sure what's going on here. And he plays both a Watcher and a Mangual. So he's trying to challenge me right there. He wants to take out that Charge Coil. I can see what he wants to do there. So I also just put the Siege Trigger up top just to start pinging away at those idols. Plays no Audi with Replenish, so you can do some more stuff like play a Harvester. And he really fills up his side of the board now, so I'm hoping that I get like an Inferno Blast or something, um, which I do. Um, so that will just make them all look a bit weaker. The Charge Coil will have an easier time to ping them off. So that is very good for me. But he plays an Earthen Mirth, which takes that out. But uh, it's not the worst thing in the world because that Mangy Wolf is not like a one count on creature or on creature. I got a really lucky Charge Coil hit right there. So I was able to take out the Harvester there with the Dust Runner. And he plays Neuro's Needle on my Charge Coil. I did not actually know you could play with Neuro's Needle on structures, but hey, now you know. 
and now I'm a little bit screwed. He has a lot of stuff attacking, and he's gonna get Nogs, and I don't have anything to do. So I just play that uh, Rohokaton in front, so if it dies, I get it back in my hand, just to minimize the damage. And I'm hoping that my Temperature Reaver can survive, which it probably will, but he has another Earthen Mirth, so that was really... He has double Earth and Mirth in his deck. I am scared. I'm really scared. So I decide, alright, this is it. I'm just going to sacrifice that Dust Runner and build up up top. Which I still think I have a solid chance because I have good creatures coming out. I have a slight card advantage. Um, but he is trying to move up and um, attack me. And he plays an Animavore on the Nog and a Scavenger Construct up there. I thought those would go together. I didn't know that the Animavore was going to go on the Nog, but whatever. So he's really, he's really... Um, giving, being really aggressive. So I'm, I'm just trying to run away. But if I run away too much, he's just gonna win and hit the idols. So I try to be able to play creatures without losing too many. But he just has so many creatures attacking this turn, and he'll likely take out center idol as well. So he uh, takes out. He actually doesn't play anything that turn. So it's a nice turn for me to hopefully I can come back this turn. If I can get the Forge and the Charge Call out, I should have a decent time. But I can only play one this turn. And um, it's really tough. I actually decide to play uh, the Charge Coil. Because I think that I'm going to need the, that Charge Coil to start hitting like the Earth and Earth creature faster. Because I, like, I, I don't have any kind of removal in this deck besides Inferno Blast. So... The, and he has a veteran there, so that really, really screwed me up. I was hoping to come up there with the, with the uh, scatter gunner, but he had a kinfolk veteran, so that hurt me a lot. But yeah, my infernal blast is my only way of dealing damage, so I need that charge coil to lower the health of the other guys. If I had a burn, which was in the draft, but I couldn't draft it because this was the ATZ judging challenge, and I had to draft some other letter that turn. Um, I think I, I think uh, things would have been dead this game right now. If I had a burn, but unfortunately I only had Inferno Blast, which means it looks like I'm getting destroyed here. I'm hoping I can protect those two charge goals on top and they can ping things away, but they're really slow at pinging things. Um, they're not like ether pumps are going off. They're not like overdrive to ether, th ether pumps. Uh, I placed more pure accuracy, gets a scroll out of that, and I'm just like, what do I do now? I do get the Inferno Blast, which destroys a lot of stuff, so if I get really lucky, I can probably, I can take out like the the Mirth to Earthborn Keeper with a double coil hit, but even then he still has another Earthen Mirth in his deck and my idols are not doing too well. And um, yeah, he's gonna win pretty soon it looks like. Uh, I'm just trying to hold on here. Plays an, uh, an uh, Eternal Statue, which will heal itself up, and then a Skythorn. So uh, if you didn't notice, I'm actually kind of close to destroying the idols myself. So. Yeah, I guess he wanted to protect that middle a little bit. And I wish I could go to that Kabank right now just to make it a little easier to take out his units. I just play a Freak. I have to play for protection, which means I'm giving up my, uh, my Iron Cloud Reaver too. And he just says GG, so I guess he has the game. And he does. He plays Regenitor on my creature to deal one direct idle damage and destroys the bottom idol. So that is game. Um, yeah, so, and it's uh, him again. So round two. He won round one, so now I'm two and one with this uh, judgment deck. So now to get five wins, I have to get three wins in a row. Um, and in round two of our little matchup, I get a one drop, and I unfortunately didn't top deck the grave lock guard until turn three, so I couldn't play that on turn two. So I just played the three drop in turn three, and it looks like I have control of the board this time. He's kind of delegated to the top and the bottom. And next turn I'm going to have a Iron Collider, so it's looking much better for me this game. So I'm just starting to fill my board with my pretty powerful creatures. He does get an Earth and Mirth on his, but uh, I'm not too worried about that. And he plays Sister the Fox, um, and then, but I get a Feedback Jolt, which takes that out, so that was really lucky. And I'm, I wish, I'm not sure, where, was I just not drawing my feedback jolts at the right time last match against this guy? Because if I had it at the right time, I could have taken down uh, those those uh, mirthed guys. I don't know. If I missed it and I had it in my hand, then that was really stupid to me. Uh, yeah, I have a really filled board now, so I just start to pump up with that forge. Yeah, look how big, look how filled my board is. Already taking that middle idol. It's really just game. There's not much you could do to come back. 
Um, but he goes with a quake, which actually takes out most of more. A quake returns to nature, uh, destroys all my units but one. So that was a huge turn. I was not expecting a quake returns to nature. Um, I don't think I saw a quake last game, um, but I did see him play returns to nature or something. Uh, so now, but I mean, I, I don't know how, but I still have a decent amount of cards and resources, so I'm able to quickly fill the board up again. And um, now I have to be wary that he has a quake. Place Ranger's Bane on the Newer's Needle guy, so it's not a huge deal. And he gets uh, some strong creatures out, but I decide to actually Blessing of Haste so I can deal 4 damage to the Great Wolf, knowing that it will die to an Inferno Blast. I could have done an Inferno Blast this turn, I probably should have looking back because I think he has Mage Wolves in the deck, um, but I ended up not, but it didn't matter. And I just go for a Blessing of Haste again. That Order, order Splash really come in handy. Another Blessing of Haste just uh, clears the board. And um, he plays some Miracle Pudding type scrolls right now, but uh, I'm just I'm just putting on uh, just playing down strong creatures like the Freak, and uh, he's trying to keep up, but I'm able to kill his creatures every turn because I'm kind of controlling the board right now. I got another Charge Coil out and a Supercharge. I'm gonna win the game soon, uh, taking down the Idols, and I believe he sees that this turn, and he goes ahead and surrenders. So that is three and one now with this deck, and now I'm facing Mr. Scar. Um, he gets a turn two Gravelock, uh, Gravelock guard before I get my turn two Gravelock guard out. Then he gets his three drop out before I have. And no, this was a misclick. I was I was aiming to sacrifice for energy to play the forge. I actually sacrificed for order, so that was a misclick. It actually could cost me the game. That was pretty big because now look at his board compared to my board, and he plays. Who knew that Lingering Spell, Fodder Pick, can I come into use? Now both of his uh, Gravelock guards are for attack. So, yeah, I mean, Grave I mean, I made a big misplay there. Uh, but it doesn't look too bad, considering I'll have a Blessing Face this turn to take out the Snargle Hunter. So it's not looking too bad for me. I'm also going to be able to get a Charge Coil out. So the, the misclick in the beginning doesn't look like it's going to bite me too hard, especially since I actually had got to use that Blessing Face. And, uh... Now I just get more units on the board, and it's not looking too bad. Um, I have that charge coil pinging, and but he is threatening me up there, so that is kind of bad. Uh, I don't really have a way to save those units. I could play an Ironclad Reaver, but I don't want to lose an Ironclad Reaver either. To note, the uh, the ling Fodder Pit Lingering Spell does end, um, so that Gravelock up there is only going to have two attack. Um, I elect to sacrifice the scrolls, which says because I wanted to uh, get that Replicaton back when it dies. Um, and I also am able to play another creature, so I do lose a couple units there, but it's okay. And now I just play the Ironclad Reaver. I could have used a Blessing of Haste to take down that bottom Grave Lock, but I didn't think it was worth it this turn. He plays a Proximity Charge. So you see, this is where I want to draw my Inferno Blast. Inferno Blast is just great in like decks with charge coils, and it's, Inferno Blast is a really underrated scroll. You don't see it played too much in constructed matches, like in ranked and stuff, because energy is just so much like better removal, like uh, burns and stuff. But in Judgment, it's a great scroll to have. It's like just deals good damage for three costs. But that was a great iron whip for him because it was able to have the Dust Runner destroy the guy in front, and then the other guy killed like scattered arms. So now it looks like he's ahead. But now I draw the Inferno Blast, which uh, could do a big deal of damage. This turn I just want to get the other Charge Coil out, and this coming turn um, I should be able to clear the board with like an, a double Inferno Blast. Um, and I think that is exactly what I. I don't think actually. I don't think the board gets cleared, but I do a lot. Unfortunately, he didn't really clump up his units that much, um, so I'm gonna have to like not like, do the Inferno Blasts that efficiently, but still, I'm able to almost clear the board. And he has the one countdown creature assault here. I was able to use a spell, uh, the Blessing of Haste, on Lockbird to take it out. But I don't really have any way to get rid of the other guys. I'm going to hope that my charge wheels hit the Revenant, or they both hit uh, one of the other creatures. And one of them does hit the Revenant, um, and the Freak is able to take some damage, I lose one charge wheel. So, he, he put down like the three scrolls, like Revenant, Copperado, and Lockling Brood, and I was able to, uh, two of them died before attacking, so that's good. And, um, here he plays a cannon, but I have Blessing Face just to take it out right then and there with my powerful Tempest Reaver, 
and it's just looking good for me now. There's, I doesn't look there's much there he can do. I get a transition to take out his uh, his replicatum when he doesn't get it back because he has less than two energy. So that's good. And he, I use a back to back turn transposition to take out his units. And I want to get the armor guy in front there so that he'll survive a hit from that Snorgle Hunter because of his armor one, and he has four health. Uh, he plays a blast strike, but that just makes it easier for me to kill him because I have a uh, feedback jolt. So that's another cleared board, and I just space out the idle damage, and um, I should win shortly. Uh, there is a uh, proximity charge, um, so I, I have to attack one of them, but it's okay. And he just says GG, because that's the game. So that's four wins with this deck. So now I'm four one, and I just this is this is it. If I win this match, I end up going a five win judgment uh, run. If I lose this match, it's a four win judgment run. Because this would this would be the second loss. Um, I'm able to get a turn three charge. But I unfortunately, did not have a one drop or a two drop this match to start off. Uh, but I'm able to go with um, some quick creatures. I play the. Uh, a little bugger down there to try to take up the forge but he has an iron whip for it so that's a little unfortunate but i'm able to have two charge goals out now and i have incendiaries for, and there's a charge with this so i'm getting i'm gonna get greedy soon <laughs> i'm like wow incendiaries is gonna be able to take out both of those structures but the plating really stopped it from playing the incendiary so i just i was hoping that one of the charge coils would hit the other charge coil so that the plating would go away so it could die to an incendiaries so i continue to hold off on the incendiaries but the charge coils are just not hitting that charge coil i just want I just want to knock off the uh, incend the plating, but there, there are proximity shards. So, uh, Inferno Blast plus um, plus uh, Incendiaries was perfect for that. Almost destroyed the board. So that charge coil is still there though, and it looks like I've controlled this match. Um, please a divinator a spark uh, on the charge coil to move them both to one health. I'm not sure what he's going on with there. Uh, I'm able to take out his charge coil. And he um, plays an overdrive to kill my card. Yeah, overdrive could could be used as like one one health removal for structures, and I'm able to clear his board. So and he spent so much time getting rid of my charge coils. So now I just have a filled board, and he has nothing except for that charge coil down there, which I will take out right now with blessing of haste. Um, so yeah, there's really not much he could do. He play. He's trying to get a footing on the game, but I just have creatures attacking like every other turn and stuff. I just play a uh, supercharge because why the heck not and um, I still have quite a bit of idle damage to do so the game's not over yeah it doesn't look like he had any removal in his deck though so, like he didn't really have board clear removal like thunder surges and sudden eruptions and stuff like that he has a lot of he lost a lot of energy to be able to pull off those plays and he just surrenders there so that is the game and that is five wins so Back to the live commentary. Alright guys, that is a four no five one run, so I get the full reward. And I have no idea what to get, what I need for crafting. I don't think I have three tier three grave lock guards. I don't think I have three tier. Actually, I don't. I really have no idea. I wish it told you how many tier three scrolls of each one you had on this page. Um, so I'm just taking scrolls kind of randomly here. Uh, uncommon. Uh, I think Hired Smuggler and Grave Lock Freak are worth a lot. Grave Lock Freak probably a little bit more. I'm not totally sure. Um, and then rares. What rares do I have to take? I have Forge, Supercharged, Ironclad. I think Ironclad is worth something and um, I'll take the forge and now do I take the supercharged I think I'm actually gonna take the hard smuggler over the supercharged I think hard smuggler is much more valuable than supercharged it goes for a lot in the black market for some reason I guess it's like an amazing energy scroll but so there is a 5-1 run so I am very pleased to get 5 wins in the A to Z don't judge me judgment challenge with Hurl Pansy so uh, like the video if you enjoyed, subscribe for more content like this, and I will see you all tomorrow. Keep on scrolling, scrollsers.